accomplished and most fun out of it. That's it. Let's eat, huh? Yes. <laughs> Living simply isn't always easy. Many remember the flood of 64 when the Rogue River lived up to its name. The wall of water took 30 years for Mr. Smithers. Here where I'm standing was where the 64 flood came. I had my wood piled right there, part of it, and it washed away. That tree was quite a bit smaller at the time of the flood, but it was out of sight. Underwater. Yes. What about your house? Well, it was wrecked. There wasn't a tight nail in it. Why'd you decide to rebuild? How old were you when that happened? I was 67. And you rebuilt that house all by yourself? No. Yes, I tore the old one down and carried it up the hill to the present site. Rebuilt it. Did you think at that time maybe of not doing that, or did it was there no question in your mind? Well, just do it or else. Move. How would you feel about moving? Well, I'd rather build the house. <laughs> oh, that's just things that I had that I uh, used in everyday life before the flood. What kind of things are in there? I can see a chainsaw, but chainsaw, well. bedstead. Here's a thing you make fruit salad with. <laughs> now these are all ruined by the flood, is that what Yeah, they were useless. That was in the house too? Yes. Yeah. I guess it's broken now. Yes, that was a pretty good, pretty good rig. Think it's better than the ones they have now? Well, I wouldn't say it was better, but it's fully as good. Yeah, yeah. Do you listen to the radio a lot? Yeah, quite a lot. That's my main source of entertainment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You ever watch much TV? None. Hardly ever. Never watch TV, really? No, I don't like it. Why? Well, these spindly-legged characters, I just can't stand them. They look anemic to me. <laughs> what, you mean the stars on these TV shows? Yes. Look anemic, huh? Yes. Do you, uh, do you remember back uh, when radio had a lot more drama on it than it has now? Yes. What do you think about what's happened to radio? I mean, a lot of what's happened to radio is because of TV, right? I mean, it's... Well, I'll tell you. You could form your own picture in your mind of what was happening, and it, I enjoyed that more than seeing it out there on the screen. Chunk I don't like. Seven five six four seven one eight. Right now. Gussie's does it again. Gussie's brings you the number one touring country music show of the nation. Leroy Van Dyke and the Auctioneer. I see you tomorrow. Van Dyke and the Auctioneer, Sunday and Sunday only at Gussie's, playing from 9 till 2. Cover charge $3 each or $5 a couple. Hey, well, all right. Right. Kitchen charges. The cost is about a dollar and a quarter a month. Not four cents. I think it's a hell of a mess. The fuel question is the main thing. I was raised in the oil fields of Oklahoma. 
and I grew up there and worked in the fields till I was nearly 30 years old. And I left there then. Now, the main reason, there were so many workers coming from the eastern oil fields that the job was damned hard to get. Mm -hmm. And now those same wells in Oklahoma, they're as dry as a powder house. The eastern fields have been gone a long time. We have a few little scattered fields, Texas, Louisiana, Wyoming, etc. How long will they last? Yeah. And this little oil that comes down from the north slope, how much of that do we get? Do you know? No, not really. Well, I've read that we get half of it, mm -hmm. which isn't very much. I read also heard that it's about seven million dollar ba barrels a day. Right. The price of gasoline is bound to go up. There's only one way for it, up. Right. How much energy do you use? Gasoline? Yeah. Me, myself? Yeah. None. There you go. <laughs> I don't want to be caught at it. Here's what you call an improvised shower. Right here. This will take your showers? Yeah. What makes the water warm? Sun. Big long black pipe? Yes. Does it get good and hot? Well, when you first turn it on, don't get under it. <laughs> <laughs> no utility bill on that either, huh? No, no utility bill. <laughs> Mr. Smithers lights his cabin and powers his radio with water. Gravity flow propels a small turbine producing 300 watts of AC current. No utility bills, but in a drought year, Mr. Smithers pays his dues to nature. Yes, I have a problem. There's no water for this thing. Oh, there isn't? No. So you're going without electricity this uh, summer? Yes. What's that like? Well, in the dark most of the time. <laughs> Does it make a big difference to you, though, really? Sure it does. Yeah? What, what, in what ways? Well, there's a difference between electric lights and a kerosene lamp. Yeah, I'll say. Well, uh, one thing, you have a peace of mind. Another thing, you live a hell of a lot longer. There's no strain on you, no danger. You're not going to hurt yourself. Only accidentally. If you're careful, you won't do that. This one's a little green. Give it to him. Well, now this apple has a coat of wax on it already. You notice it? Yeah. How's that happen? Well, nature did it. You consult with her. There's only so much of it. In the old days where you could just go west and get more buffalo. Uh, and these great unexplored stretches lay there. Sure, there was a great spur to adventure. And it was a great spur to using everything you could lay your hands on, too. Now you know that this is a finite area. This is the spaceship world. And here we are. That's all there is of it. So to be a <coughs> different kind of spirit than the pioneers had in just ranging out into the unknown. I suppose we could range into the unknown as far as medicine is concerned and the mind is concerned and the universe is concerned. But uh, I think that what we do now has become smarter than we ever had to do before. Maybe, and they may be courageous too because we've got to be ingenious to make what we have last so we can keep this nation strong and we can have an enjoyable life. And that's harder when you get more people and you finally find that you just don't have everything left out there, just these vast resources and riches and open space, that your nose is almost against the wall as far as living is concerned. So it is uh, not as spectacular a life maybe as we look back at history as the covered wagons or 
the, the, the founding of America and the revolution and the Civil War and all those things. But I think it's going to be a, a life that challenges us up here more than any we've ever had before. And if we work with our minds uh, intelligently and with our hearts through uh, a feeling really of brotherhood and nobody's going to be left behind, that we can have a hundred years, the next hundred years could be uh, wonderful ones that America can be proud of.